So we've seen this. Now, uh, there are several short keyboard shortcuts within our studio. And if you want to use them, uh, what you could do is just take a look at the keyboard sh shortcuts. You can do Alt Shift K. That brings up all the keyboard shortcuts. Of course, here you're seeing the Mac versions. But if you did that on a Windows computer, you would see the Windows keyboard shortcuts. Another way to look at this is also uh, to go under the Tools menu and Keyboard Shortcuts. You can see all the shortcuts. So if you're going to be using R quite a bit, R Studio quite a bit, you may want to master some of these keyboard shortcuts so that uh, you work more efficiently. Okay, now when you do programming, uh, like you're doing with R, many times you run into trouble and so uh, it's a good idea for you to know what to do. Okay, so here's a, uh, a command that somebody might have executed. My underscore variable is given the value 10. Okay, now they try to print out my underscore variable and they get this error message. Error object my variable not found. Okay, so what's going on here? Why are we getting this error message? Right. Of course, when you get this error message, object, something not found, what R is telling you is, look, you, you typed a variable name, but I'm not able to recognize the variable name. I don't know what this variable name is. Right. So obviously, that should tell you that for whatever reason, you may think that what you've done is right. For whatever reason, you didn't create this variable that you're trying to refer to. Right. So uh, the instinct for us is to think about, oh, the program is doing something wrong. Okay. Now, when you're doing anything work, when you're working with computers, you should never think, oh, the computer is doing something wrong. Of course, there are very, very, very rare occasions when the computer does do something wrong, but 99.99999% of the time, it is some subtle mistake that we are making. Okay. So, for example, if you look very closely at this, uh, this is actually not an eye at all. Okay. Just as a character that looks very much like an eye, but it's not an eye. So this is obviously not my variable. It is something else. And that's why R Studio is saying not found. Of course, this is not a mistake. I have to admit, this is not a mistake we are likely to make because this is a character that doesn't exist on the keyboard. It's not easy to even enter this character. Uh, but the point is, uh, the mindset that when you see an error message, uh, to think that the program is doing something wrong, I did everything right, the program is misbehaving, that's the wrong mindset. Right. When you get an error message, you have to, first of all, see what the error message is. Uh, try to make some sense of it. Uh, so, for example, here it's telling you this object is not found. Okay, And you may say, well, I just created it. Why is it not finding it? Well, you know, you made some mistake in typing the name or something like that. Okay, So that's a mindset that you have to see. When you, get, when you see an error, be careful. Think that you made a mistake. Another example. Okay, So library tidyverse. And then I'm just doing some ggplot. Okay, so something, you do all this and then you're getting an error message, right? So this is a ggplot command that we typed from, uh, you know, what you've learned in the previous lectures. Then it's saying error in structure, list data equals data, blah, blah, blah. It says argument data is missing. This is a key point, right? So when you read an error message, uh, there will be parts of the error message that you don't understand. Like, for example, all this stuff, error in structure, list data equals data layers. I didn't type any of this stuff, what's going on, right? All this stuff is happening because RStudio is executing this command, right? That's a function within RStudio. So it's executing the code of that function, which we don't care about and uh, we are not familiar with that code. But eventually, if you read far enough, you will see a hint as to what your problem is. It's saying argument data is missing, right? One thing we know that in, in ggplot, we say data equals something to indicate which data frame you're plotting, right? So it's saying it's missing. You may think, oh, well, I've specified data here. Then you go and look and see, oh my God, instead of data, I typed Dota. So obviously, it's not finding the uh, the variable name, uh, the, the variable data that it wants, the argument data that it wants. So it's throwing up an error message. It doesn't know what Dota is, right? And ggplot requires you to indicate what the data is. Of course, you could indicate the data right inside ggplot or as we know, you could put it in one of the geoms, but there's no data in any of these things. So obviously, it's saying, look, you haven't specified what data to plot. Okay. So even if you, the, the lesson here is you will get error messages. Nobody, uh, even today when I, uh, you know, after working with R for six or seven years now, 
Even today, every day I make mistakes, right? So that's not the problem. We are all going to make mistakes as we work in computer-based environments. The important thing is to have a mindset that says, okay, when I see an error message, even if I don't understand some of it, I need to be uh, to carefully look and see which parts of the error messages I am able to understand and then make the best of it. So in this case, if you read further far enough into your error message, you can see what the problem is and you can fix it. Okay, so you have to have a mindset that says, when I get an error message, I have to read it carefully and find something in that error message that gives me a hint as to how I can solve the problem. That's a very important mindset to have when you're doing programming. Okay, so here uh, we, are, we are using a function that we are going to learn later. It's a function called filter and we have typed filter mpg cylinder equals 8. You're going to learn about this later on, about this particular function. And it says, could not find function flitter, right? Now, when you're programming, sometimes you will type function names incorrectly. That's pretty common, right? But once you've typed it incorrectly, uh, you will tend to keep on reading it as if it's correct, right? So to our eyes, this will keep on looking like we've typed filter, but it's actually we've typed flitter, which is not the name of a function. So the moment our studio says could not find function flitter or could not find function anything and it gives the name of a function, there are only two reasons why that can happen. Okay, two causes for that. One cause is you mistype the function name like here. Instead of filter, we type filter. That's one possibility. The other possibility is you're using a function which exists in a package that you have not yet loaded. Right? So normally, remember, when you load a package, you say library package name, and only then do the functions in that package become available for you to use. If you have not loaded it and you are trying to use a function in the package, then R won't find the function and it will give you the error message. Right? So in this case, of course, the error is simply that we mistyped the function name, but you will see the same kind of error message when you uh, use a function without loading the library or package within which the function is contained. Let's see another example. So here, there is a there is a data set called diamonds, which is available inside the ggplot package. So the moment you have loaded ggplot, diamond should be available. So now we type a command filter. This time we have typed the function name correctly. Filter diamond comma caret greater than three. Once again, the filter command I have not yet explained to you. That's coming shortly. We'll explain that, right? Uh, but the point is, look at this error message. Error in filter dot data dot dots equals lazy. Well, this is stuff we don't understand. Okay, and we are not expected to understand all this initial uh, gobbledygook. Okay, but later on it says object diamond not found. Okay, diamond is a data frame that we are trying to use. Right, it's saying object diamond is not found. You say, well, I load a ggplot. The diamond data frame should be there. But in reality, the name of that data frame is diamonds in plural. Okay, so if you refer to a data frame and the name of the data frame is different from, uh, and you type a different name than what is the real name, then obviously the system won't be able to find that data frame. So that's a mistake. Right, so object diamond not found. In reality, it is diamonds. Okay, so that's again another example of how an error message tells you what's going on. So you just have to be careful and be alive to that. So before we start looking at functions from uh, dplyr, let's load a data frame which contains a lot of data and we'll use that to illustrate many of the features of uh, dplyr. We've already loaded, uh, you've already installed the package tidyverse. Okay, so we are just loading the library tidyverse, loading the package. Uh, but we are going to use a data frame called NYC flights 13. Okay, this consists of information about all the flights that took off from uh, any of the New York airports, which is uh, JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. Any of the three airports, all the flights that took off for the year 2013. Okay, so that data is available in this package called NYC Flights 13, right? So that is a package that contains only data. It doesn't contain any functions. So if you want to use the data, you just load the package. So first we install the package with this command. 
And then we load the package by doing library NYC flights 13. The package is loaded. And after that, if this contains a data frame called flights, as you will shortly see, right? So to look at the details of that data frame, you can do question mark flights, right? In fact, in our studio, you can type question mark and the name of an object, and you'll get help on that object, an object belonging to a package, right? So flights is an object that belongs to this package, NYC flights 13. So we loaded the package with the library command. Now we can get help on its individual components. If you do question mark flight, uh, flights, then uh, within our studio on the bottom right hand pane, uh, help will pop up telling, describing what the data frame is all about. Okay, so if you type flights, then you will get this output. Okay, now look, this looks pretty different from the normal data frames that we are used to. Okay, it says this is a, a table and it contains its thing is 336,776 times 19, right? A table is a modified version of a data frame. Okay, so in NYC Flights 13, this data is stored not as a regular data frame, but as a modified data frame uh, called Tibble. And we'll be using Tibble quite a lot uh, going forward. It tells you that this data frame has 336,776 rows and 19 columns. That's a pretty big data set, I would say, right? So even though when people say big data, they're talking of data sets which are even far bigger than this, but this big data set is something that R can easily handle uh, by itself, right? This is why before we get into big data in this course, actual big data technologies, uh, I'm just showing you regular R how to handle fairly large data sets, okay? Even much bigger data sets, R can very smoothly and comfortably handle, okay? So this is a fairly large data set and it's a table, so it displays differently from a regular data frame. So of course, otherwise it tells you what are the columns, year, month, day, departure time, scheduled departure time, departure delay. It's showing you some of those columns and it's telling you for every column, right? So table is a different kind of data frame. It's telling you for every column, what is the type of data within that column? See, normally with a data frame, you would have to do, uh, you know, a class uh, or to see it or STR to see what type of column uh, data is stored in each column. With a table, uh, you don't have to do that, right? You could just type the variable name and uh, it'll tell you this detail. So it's telling you that year is an integer, month is an integer, day is an integer, departure time is an integer, uh, etc. And it's telling you that departure delay is actually a double, okay? Double meaning that it's a uh, uh, it's, it can have fractional values. It's a floating point number as opposed to a fixed point integer number. Okay, the reason our studio figured that this is double is maybe down the line somewhere there's a 3.5 or a 4.5 or some such fractional number. Okay, so it, uh, the, when you print a table, for example, when, when we just printed the command flights, it shows you 10 rows and it shows you as many columns as will fit into your current uh, uh, your console display and then it gives you more information at the bottom right so it's telling you that this data frame has 13 more columns right so it's already showing you uh, 3 plus 3 6 columns and it's showing you there are 13 more variables of course we know that because it's see, told us up front that it has 19 columns and in fact I have cut off the display here it will show you the names and type of all the remaining columns as well okay which is also useful and for every column it's showing you the name and the type of course it's not showing you any data okay now with a regular data frame if you type just the name of the data frame then you would get a whole screen full of information right it will just scroll all over the place and you have no control over it uh, this is a much more controlled way of looking at the information so Tibble has these kinds of properties